what up, what up? Bro, I feel like we should be doing this from a club or something, bro. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> we need strippers in here. <laughs> Nah, that sound like it costs money. Okay. <laughs> we we not there yet. Not there. <laughs> We're not there, and I'm not into paying for. It. <laughs> I can go home and get teas for free. What's wrong? <laughs> Actually, no, I can't. That, that, that's me. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> Yo, welcome back, everybody, to the Carbon Footprint Podcast, episode two hundred. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Fucking A, man. Two crazy, man. 200 Shit, episodes, dude. man. So crazy, man. I just forgot that my whole my whole intro spiel. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was I was starting to say it, I had to zip and then I forgot two minutes. <laughs> oh man. Dude, who the thought? I got it, man. Fucking go ahead. He is Swan and I'm Sean and every week we get together, have a few drinks, talk about things going on in the world, try to focus on things making an impact. Whether they be good, bad, or otherwise. Hit him with a special drink Let's of episode go, 200. Man. We, uh, man, you, you guys know for the 100, we had to do, uh, I think we didn't do a cocktail. We just did a straight up tequila. We did Casa Dragones Hoving, I think, at that oh, for, good the, for, for the you, 100. Man. Did man. you have to go back and look at that? I remember, nah, I remember, man. Yeah. I remember because I, I gave it so much thought at the time yeah. of what I wanted to do. And then this, and then I think I texted you during the week, like, man, I'm struggling and I want to, then I was looking at cocktails that were like 200 themed and yeah. stuff. Like that. Um, but, we threw down because we had been doing so many old fashions and stuff this year that I was like, it'd be a crime to not, not do to like it. some variation of an yeah, old fashioned. But I was yeah. like, oh man, how do we make it, you know, kind of like special or just a little, uh, a little bit different than a typical old fashioned? So the Macallan drinkers who are watching on YouTube are screaming at us right now that we're mixing Macallan, the, the 12 year uh, uh, Macallan uh, double cask. Um, because normally you do not, and I don't, I've never mixed this typically except to make this. I was gonna say, even for an old fashioned. So, no, it, usually this is something you drink straight up. Now, the okay. idea for an old-fashioned with Macallan, believe it or not, came from Corona Cigar. Here, they do a smoked version of this with the Macallan. Oh, nice. And it's like a high-end cocktail that they kind of do. And it's like, you know, the, the you know, whatever you pay for an old-fashioned, it's like double or triple the price, you know, for this version, quote-unquote, of it. But it's and it's the presentation, too. Yeah, yeah, it comes to your table, you know, it's smoking out. And we, I, I tried for fucking ever to get this thing to smoke pretty on a picture. I couldn't do it, but... It does taste smoky, and it's amazing. But, um, yeah, so anyway, so wanted to do an old-fashioned for a little bit, uh, something a little bit different. So it's a scotch. Obviously, it's from the McAllen drinkers. You guys know uh, when, when McAllen, it kind of speaks for itself. Um, and we use local bitters. So these cherry, it's a smoked cherry bitters from a local uh, business here called the My Cocktail Cabinet, um, which I got from a, a farmer's market next to, nice. to here. Um, but you know, they, they have, they have their own IG, they have, uh, I think a storefront you know, online, you can order stuff from as well, but, um, they create a bunch of cocktail stuff, man. And he had a bunch of different bitters. And I love the fact that, uh, how they split their bitters into categories, uh, depending on the alcohol that they oh, sort okay. of recommended it with. Um, but yeah, so, so I picked up these smoked cherry bitters. So we did the Macallan, two ounces of Macallan, like you always do in an old fashioned smoked cherry bitters, the Luxardo Maraschino cherries, uh, simple syrup a half an ounce of simple syrup um and then we did orange bitters in there as well mix it in there uh build the old-fashioned with those and then smoke it I, the other touch to this was i smoked it with cherry wood oh okay so not just regular oak or you could do cedar or what i we did um the chips are cherry wood chips so just kind of to go with the whole cherry old-fashioned mccallan you know theme the, of the smokiness of it but yeah tastes banging we're halfway through this bottle already. Damn. Um, and it might be gone by the time the pod's over. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if it is, only because yeah, of you. It's probably, I was going to say, it's probably because <laughs> of me. Because, uh, yeah, I, I, the, these don't last long with the, the McCallans. Man. I love these, man. I could drink this all day. It's so good, man. And it's, and it's sneaky, man. I think you had it for the first time straight up earlier. Yes. And you were like, I was not expecting. When you take the first sip, you're expecting it to, like, just. It feels strong. Yeah. But, then, then, when, but then when you swallow it like that, that, that. I guess that that strength, I guess, is the best way I can describe it. It just it goes away really quick. Yeah, so you're it, just like, oh, okay. It's such a good like. Uh, I'm a big fan of anything smoky, and like, and this is already like a smokier. And it, and it does smoky. have some different flavors yeah. in it. Uh, my 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 palate is not great, but but I can imagine that somebody that has a really good palate can probably pick out um, what's in that. 
Maybe you could be one of those like wine connoisseurs. Yeah. Where you're like I'm, I'm thinking I think rhubarb, vanilla, <laughs> vanilla, some <laughs> hints of cinnamon. <laughs> like nah, bro, this shit's smooth. <laughs> we're ghetto, <laughs> so we'd be like, bro, I thought it was gonna be strong, and it's not strong. It's smooth. <laughs> That's what we used to describe. And shit didn't make me cough. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you start, start drinking alcohol anything that you're like is good you're like it was smooth that's our go to yep <laughs> that's right <laughs> it's amazing but yeah so shout out to y'all man getting us to 200 that oh my god man this is this is never like our fucking um you know obviously episode 200 and um we got to sort of shout out just the pod and 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 the people who have been following us for 200 episodes like this is like a milestone for us, man. And I don't even know why, right? It's always like the the, the hundred, the two hundred, the three hundred. We're part of yeah, the field, yeah, yeah, something like that. But to think back to when we started this, what four years ago? Yeah, a little over, over four years. Over ago. four years. Yeah, we ago. started during COVID, man. We were a COVID uh, uh, project, COVID babies. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were COVID right. babies, man. <laughs> and 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 to go, I remember getting that phone call from you, and and you, you know, we had talked about this. We actually talked about this with for with years, a, with a, for years, man, yeah, with a with a former coworker of ours yep. that was supposed to be like the three of us doing like a sports podcast, right? Yep. Yeah, that was like the idea. The and, idea. And it was called Shots, is what we were going to call that's it. That's right. Dude, I don't know if that's people right. remember, but if you go back and listen to the first episode of yeah. this podcast, we even had a different name. We called it uh, a Pour It Out, I think is what it was. It's like, oh, the, yes. And Pour then, It Out And then we had to change and it. And fucking Jimmy somebody Fallon else, did a segment I, on his I, late night show called Pour It Out. And I was like, fuck you, Jimmy. And then we had to change the name of the pod. That's right. Because we didn't want to. That's right. The, yeah. I think episode one and two, maybe, we called yeah, Pour It Out. Probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, yeah, fun fact, maybe I'll ever get trivia one day. On the Carbon Food Podcast of episode one and two, probably called Pour It Out. Yeah. 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 But one of the things that, that you know, this, these last four plus years has taught me, man, is that A, and, and we all know this, right? It's like years go by so quickly. And, you know, since we've been doing this and people that I have spoken to along these past four years um, have told me things like, oh, man, and, you know, like I wanted to start a podcast. So I wanted to do this. Something. And it's just like you literally just on your own went out and kind of bought like you bought the microphones you bought and wh whatever those two things are over there <laughs> the <laughs> recorder and uh, the headphone amplifier yeah. See, i don't even know out. i don't even know what they are <laughs> he bought that shit and some and some wires <laughs> And and you just no, you didn't. And to really, be fair, I've gone through like four versions of these headphone <laughs> amplifiers too, man, because they just weren't good. But, but no, like you literally call me, you go, yo, I bought the mics, I bought the equipment, like let's go. So literally, it's it's two mics and then two other pieces of equipment, and and that was it. And then we added the camera later on, but it's just to kind of go to show that it doesn't take much. No. What it does take is commitment. And that was the one thing that we had from day one where we were just like, yo, we're just gonna commit to once a week. And and granted, we've had we've had to skip for vacations or, you know, things yeah. things that just pop up or whatever. Yeah, life, but Yes, for life. But but we've you know, moved it some weeks where we're like, no, no, let's do it the next day or thing. Yes. Like we try our best usually to get it in even if we can't do it on our yep. sort of scheduled night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like if we had never skipped right, episode two hundred would have came around that May time frame. Yeah. So we're a little yep. bit behind from that. But again, life happens. But my point is like anybody can do this. It just takes commitment. And that and that's just that's the thing with anything, right? Like if you're just gonna if you're gonna do something even if you don't have the money or the resources or whatever, just commit. If you fucking commit to something and, and, and if you're all in, you'll make it work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. And then I think, and obviously we're making sort of the episode and the pod and whatever, it's sort of the carbon footprint. But like I, I found myself reflecting a lot on like, I guess what it's meant to me personally yeah. and 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 it's cool like you're saying like a lot of our our family or a lot of our friends like everybody's been like so supportive that we know yeah and it's and it's always cool to get texts from like people who are like bro i'm at the gym you know like we just got one like a week ago from a friend of ours who's like bro i'm at the gym fucking almost died because i was lifting and you know you guys said some funny shit and you know the weights almost fell on me um <laughs> And, it, and that shit honestly doesn't get old, man. I love getting, and you'll, we'll get stuff like that oh, from like yeah. friends or your family. Um, you know, even like the people talking shit on maybe our TikTok or our IG or the YouTube videos. Um, and honestly, bro, even the people who are just like the guys that hate us and whatever, yeah. I'm like, they fucking listen. That's so cool. You know, like, 
<laughs> like I don't care. Um, but I, I find myself reflecting a lot, man, on even me, man. And I think a lot of stuff with it, that it's done is like, I, I mean, obviously you've known me long enough. Like I fucking ramble when I talk and uh, uh, like too much sometimes. And I'm not necessarily a good listener and I'm not necessarily a good communicator as much as I talk in terms of like, I, I think actually getting stuff out and what the pod's really done for me, man. It, it's forced me to like really reflect on things so if there's like a topic or something i know we want to talk about especially when it's some like some serious shit like obviously i like to have fun and I, and you know obviously crack jokes but there will be like topics like especially you know during covid we had like some of the george floyd stuff and we had yeah. like uh uh you know it, over whether well, it was like mass shootings or whatever we've had some topics where like they got heavy and it forced me to like really reflect on that stuff or you know like fatherhood or you know like uh, things about work or whatever it was and I'm I'm usually the you know kind of like uh, I guess diffuse everything with humor or whatever and I think it's really forced me to like think about things and actually talk about them and then I think it's made me better with um I, I don't want to give myself credit saying I'm a better human because I I I yeah I I I I just I don't know I I just wouldn't go that far but I I, I do think in terms of like I've grown as a human I guess is what I would say that is just from doing this pod because I do think I'm I'm more empathetic I I I, I do think I listen more I'm getting and it's all be, because we do this right because for an hour every week as bouncy as I get I got to make sure I'm at least focused for like 15 minutes of it to listen to what you have to say right, right. and then not respond to just not listen to just respond because obviously that's sort of the name of the game is we, we bounce off of each other, but actually like take in what you're saying and try to give meaningful feedback or, or, or at least have a meaningful conversation back and forth. Because if it's just like, mm -hmm. anyway, bro, so let me tell you about this one thing. Like it doesn't right, work, which is right. what I do in my personal life. Right. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm fucking terrible at listening. Uh, but it, it's definitely made me better. I think, um, from that perspective and you know, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, it, and I've had so much fun. Like, I look forward to it. Like, no matter how shitty the weeks are, I still always like look forward to doing the pod. It's just like, or, or like, if the the week is eventful, like something will happen, and I'm like, ooh, I yeah, can't, can't wait, wait to, wait to do that. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, no, cool. man. For for me, man, it's just been like the because there's sometimes where, where where you know I'll be looking. You know, we both look for. For those of you who don't know, like we we kind of find stories throughout the week and things that we want to talk about, and then we and then when we get together, we don't talk about it before we get on. We'll give sort of like a one liner of just like, "Hey, did you hear about this?" No, good. All right, I'm gonna tell you about it because because we wanted each each other's like real re yeah. like real time reaction, and so there's weeks where it's like I'll look for stuff. and then I'll find like shitty topics or things <laughs> or whatever, and then but. And, and then, and then, like for me, I'm always worried when I feel like I don't pull my weight. But what I have found is, like, even when I have shitty topics or whatever, like I'll come through, and then for whatever reason that week, you just have way more than me. Yeah. And so it's always and then enough. vice versa, and it's always yeah, yeah. Because I always, always feel like I'm enough, not pulling bro. my weight, and then the same thing, yeah, yeah. And and then you'll be like, bro, I have fucking fifteen, and I'll be like, all right, and, or. or I don't even know which one's worse. There are weeks where I'll have a lot, but I don't care about any of it. Yeah. And, and it feels so disingenuous to talk about shit I don't care about. Yep. And, you know, like, we'll do it because I'm like, I, I could find an angle in here somewhere. It's meaningful to somebody. But it's hard for me to get into it if I don't give a shit about it. And then yeah. you'll come out with something where I'm like, oh, and then we'll spend fucking 45 minutes on one thing. You know, it's like, uh, uh, it, it's hilarious to me, too, because sometimes I'll read a thing and I, and I think about you and I go... Oh, I just want to see his reaction to this. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like, huh, how can I make Sean either lose his shit or laugh or whatever? I'm like, oh, this is gonna be awesome. I'm like, we gotta do it because we'll we'll take the most fucking mundane. And sometimes we don't even expect it. Like it's hilarious. Like the oh, throwaway yeah, no. topics that we'll go through, and and even I'll be like, eh, I don't know about this, but like it might be this, and it ends up being like the thing that we talk about the most or gets you know like the the most messages from people will be like, you guys talked about this, and I'll be like, man, I thought that was like a throwaway topic like at the time. And it just do you never know yeah. that's another thing that I've learned about this is like you never know what's gonna resonate with people. We've had episodes where we'll leave it and we'll go, uh, ah, it wasn't that good. And then we'll get feedback from somebody to go, yo, when you guys talked about this, like I reflected on da 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 da, you know, yeah. whether it was kids or whatever, right? Like so um I think I guess the message for for, for anybody listening is like if it's something that you wanna do, um like just go all in. Like just just go in and fucking commit and do it. Um, this has been fucking fun. 
and we're four years, well, you know, we're over four years in, 200 episodes, which I think is phenomenal. And um, I don't see us slowing down. So no, nah, man, it's it, it's funny. It's the next four we, plus. We we, we we were joking before, like man, we're professionals at this, but it really does feel like obviously tons of room to grow. But it just, I, like just gotten more comfortable doing this. I remember feeling so cringy oh at the God. beginning, and I still and do because li- I hate listening, listening to, to myself or watching myself. Yeah. Oh no, I'm over that, bro. But, oh I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm never gonna over be over that. that. <laughs> but, but what I what I think. Where I've gotten to is where I like I'm genuinely entertained by like us, yeah, not necessarily me, but like us, like we'll have shit sometimes where I'm like, uh, that the, the banter back and forth, or, or like even the the serious discussions. I'm like, you know, it's like like listening back to it. I find myself sort of into it, yeah, and uh, and I never thought I would even get to that point because I fucking as listen as as arrogant as I could be and whatever. <laughs> like I hate listening and watching myself. Like hate it and um. Yeah, and it doesn't. It's one of those things where I thought it would get better. I still fucking cringe when I see oh, me no. on camera. Yeah. Bro, I used to the the first probably I don't know the first probably ten or twenty episodes when I would listen back, I would literally be pacing. I would pace. I have like wireless <laughs> headphones on, and I would pace listening to myself. But now, bro, like no, I don't. I mean, not not just now. Like it's been a long time. Like I've gotten over that, and and I enjoy it, man. I enjoy like the, like like tomorrow. I listen to this. I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy it. I have found that over time I'm doing less and less editing, which is yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I feel like we, you know, we're, we're into our groove, man, and and, sure. and and this is not gonna stop anytime Dude, soon. I it's funny, man. Is that as I and this isn't uncommon, but like when I was doing stand up all the time, like trying to hit open mics, mm-hmm. um, a lot of people just set up a tripod and they'll record themselves, and I and I have done that for sure. Uh, you know, because they they either just want the clips or you know they yep. they, they want the performance, but. For for a lot of people, especially like doing open mics, it's like you're just kind of studying yourself. Like you want to see what worked, what didn't, um, and you improve the sets that way. I don't like watching me so much that I would just put my phone on the stool on the stage and just do the audio. Oh, and even then I cringe, but at least I can do it in the car and like listen to the audio. And like to your point, like I couldn't just sit here and listen to me because I wouldn't. It's like I'd be in the car and I would just play it. And then, and then I'm like, I could like check out and just listen for what got the laughs, when, why, was the timing all like that sort of thing. I hate it when I watch myself. I find myself getting too critical about like, and and don't get me wrong, you do need the appearancing in comedy, right? Because especially if you're like, I'm fucking super animated, right? So a lot of the stuff I do is like my hands and my facial right, expressions right. and whatever, like. Um, and so you need that, but I couldn't get out of my head of like, I fucking hate watching myself. And so I've just found myself listening to audio. So it's funny with this, when I started having to do the video all the time, it was oh, like, I had right. to stop watching. I would put the video on and like almost put my head down at you the want computer. A yeah. <laughs> Bro, it was like, I would put it and I would just have to have my head down. I would have to watch to make sure it doesn't glitch right or anything like that. But I find myself like listening to it and then not wanting to watch the video because I'm like, I still fucking hate watching myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, look at the camera. No, what up? No, we here. We up in here. What's up? <laughs> People listening to this on audio right now somewhere like, the fuck is Man, happening? What are they what doing? Are and we're not going to cut it out either <laughs> for the audio. <laughs> No man, so, so dude, thank, thank you, bro. Thank you for hanging with thank me you for, for fucking for, hanging with me. <laughs> absolutely, man. For 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 these two hundred episodes, it would have been just me talking into a mic <laughs> for like fourteen episodes <laughs> by myself. It would have been me just talking to nobody, just talking to myself in my head. <laughs> fucking two hundred more, man. Let's, I, I, fuck. What is Joe Rogan on? We. Oh my god. He's in a couple thousands, yeah, right? Bro. All right. I'm not even. I'm We're coming, even, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> we got to do Joe, seven a week. Joe's Joe. gonna have to retire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker does like seven, eight episodes a week, man. Jeez, good for him, mm-hmm. bro. Do you oh, see that? We had another, we had another milestone this, this uh, today actually. Um, okay, another school shooting. Oh, okay. Everybody, everybody getting the bangers this week. That's okay, dropping bangers. Let's go. In in uh in Georgia, um, at the uh Appalachian app. How the fuck you say this? Appalachian. Oh, the Appalachian uh, oh, high Appalachia. school. Oh, Appalachian oh. high school. So it's in Winder, Georgia. Okay. Um, four students killed. Uh, excuse me, like four killed. Nine injured. Two students, two teachers are dead. Yo, you notice this shit never happens in like fucking 
Chicago, like, oh, I mean, I know Chicago has its own set of it. Got it. So I was just going to say, man, for sure. Pick any other city. But the sc- all right, all right. <laughs> this shit doesn't happen in Detroit or fucking New York City or like you don't see school yeah, shootings the, the in the places major where they have cities. like metal detectors yeah. and they've had it for like twenty yeah. years. And yeah. there's a shit ton of people, and it's always it's always like the depressed kids from the shitty town, maybe because they can't get away. There's not enough people for them to like. Oh yeah, like cling with and all that, like like to have their own click with. So it's this just odd. The the shooter's name is a fourteen year old kid, bro. Fourteen. Colt Gray. That's, oh, that's, that's a, a hell of a that's name, a, bro. That's a white kid. Oh, bro. You, you, yeah, no, yeah. it's a white kid, but it's also you're gonna be you're gonna assassinate a president and be in a history book one day with a name like Colt Gray. <laughs> or you could have been a quarterback and you're wasting your fucking right. time on guns. <laughs> <laughs> You could have been firing touchdowns. Yeah, you could have been firing. God damn, Colt. <laughs> so this this is a kid that actually um he he was a student at at the school. He was, and he's four, fourteen. Fourteen. Pa- parents gun his own like don't, or, or don't get, don't no, know, too early, too early. I, I'm, I'm assuming by the, by the time this uh, did he get caught? Did he off himself? Did they shoot him? I think they killed him. They killed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, think, I think they killed him. Um, so the cops in Georgia ain't cucks like the ones in um Duvaldi, dude. Af- after that. Man, the, you know the, the the police officers ain't playing around. Yeah, no. Nah, remember those the, the ones that were hiding in uh yeah, in Luvaldi, right? Luvaldi, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, in yeah. the way. Shout out to the Windsor cop. <laughs> <laughs> and yo, like it's you know, for those of you listening to us, man, you know we don't we we don't take anything too seriously. Obviously, this is this is is tragic, right? I would hate. It's like when you send your kids to school, the last thing you are thinking is, oh, there might be a school shooter. Right. But in the reality that we live in today in the U.S., you know, we used to have when I, when I was in high school, we had like bomb threats and yeah. shit like that. Right. Now they have like school shooting drills. Yeah. yeah. You know, so so it's a it's a reality. Dude, my that daughter we live just in. had Friday a evacuation, uh, a lockdown, you know, the the, okay. the whole like hide under the desk. Oh, the, yeah. Close the doors, whatever. And, and the drill. But it wasn't a drill. It was like the real deal. Um, or so they thought, and then and then they had an evacuation. It's like get the fuck out of the school ASAP, um, and it turned out to be like a bomb threat or whatever. But it is like so normal now that when they text you that, like it used to like freak you out, yeah. and, and it's kind of sad because you become so numb to it. Like we're just like, oh, another one. You know, it's like, <laughs> and maybe maybe it's the ignorance of because it hasn't happened, or and because I see it happening so much on the news and and. Like she's okay, and so maybe afterwards I'm, I'm sort of allowed to feel, I, 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 not, I I don't know what the word is, but it's like I, she she's safe, she's okay, and so like I'm I I feel like it's fine to make jokes about it or kind of just be dismissive of it because it is so normal, even yeah. though at its core, if I thought about it, it bothers me, right? Yeah, yeah like of course. The, of the course. fact that that it's a thing, but yeah, I think it's just becomes so like ingrained in our sort of culture that it. It's just kind of like, oh, cool. So fire drill, you know, like right, it's- dude. Not for nothing, man. When they when when we used to get bomb threats at our at our high school, um, they wouldn't even take us off campus. We would just go into like the like I don't know like 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 a field away from the buildings. To oh, so it wouldn't be. It wasn't even like you go home or right. no. And then of course, like back then, I'm trying to think like like there was. There's really I no. You were gonna say they put you all in one room. I'm like, is that yeah. so cleanup is easier? <laughs> <laughs> like should this go down <laughs> and then of course there, there's no there's no cell phones right so my mother didn't oh, know about yeah. it it would be like i would get home and go uh we had a, another bomb threat today and they were all it was always false of course dude the bomb threats are one and it's usually again, the, it was usually the sure. students that was doing i go that shit. no one's going to give you a warning if they're going to do some shit like that is is what i've sort of like come to is like most of the time, these kids just do shit. And then afterwards, we're like, well, if you'd have saw them on social media, they, you know, were posting weird right, shit. It's like, all right. well, these fucking kids post weird shit, and they like to troll, and they like to talk shit. And the problem now is that we can't decipher between the shit talk and the real talk. And so, like, and then the kids who are pranking a bomb threat and, you know, like, and then, the and, swatting. Then, and, and then with AI, bro, like, it's, you don't even know what's real and what's not no, anymore, it's, bro. It's, 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 it sucks, man. Um, You know, so, you know, definitely, uh, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to to the family of, of those that 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 were killed, man. That you know, nobody nobody should have to go to school or work and worry about getting shot. Man. No, for you sure. Know, unless un- unless you're in the military. Yeah. Then yeah, you can. Yeah, then, or, or, then you yeah, yeah. Or law enforcement or, or law enforcement. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, something Sorry, like yes. that. No, for sure. Uh, uh, there are definitely professions where you expect that that comes as part of the job. Yep. Uh, you know, teacher. 
and you know like uh accountant is it one of them or right. you know doctor or whatever it, yeah definitely it not happens fucking definitely not now. high school teacher no right like no, no, or, no. Or, or grade school teacher or anything like that so this has been um in 2024 there's been so far 23 school shootings in the u.s um and at least they said at least 127 people have died in those and then I looked at because I always I always look at this. I'm talking about this before on here. Chic- the South Side of Chicago. You said 23, and how many have died? 127. All right. Do you think the aim's getting worse? Like how, the, as much <laughs> video games as they play, that's it. That's averaging like five a shooting. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed in you the need, numbers. You need you need real target practice. You need <laughs> not not no, not Call of Duty. The Call target, of Duty one, the analog practice. sticks yeah, don't quite. Gotta, okay. Now nah, yeah, you gotta you gotta you Fair gotta enough. you gotta fuck with the windage. You got <laughs> <it, bro. laughs> yeah, factor in reload time is a little a little slower in real life. All right, all right, fair enough. But dude, like. I always think think about Southside Chicago. Like, it, it's it's a it's an area that doesn't get a lot of press because there's a and, and, but there's a lot of homicides in there. And so far, in Southside of Chicago in 2024, yeah, there have been 394 people slain. Damn. And just in the Southside of Chicago? Yes. That's that's a little more than that's what two a day basically almost. Dude. And that's what I'm saying. It's just like this is something that doesn't get a lot of press. It used to, and it just sort of. I don't stopped. think it has, bro. When? But it, 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 well, it Other used to be Con- the headline Kanye. was was Chicago's. Yeah, it was like I don't know. I felt like the headline used to be like people would just make fun of Chicago and the murder rate, and then you know Dude, we had the shy as a TV nuts, show and all this bro. shit. And then now I feel like it kind of sort of fell off, and people don't pay attention anymore. Um. It's just it like there's a like it's a problem, bro. And 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 just like you know, when whenever we talk about school shootings and things like that, there's always the 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 topic that comes up of of gun control and shit like that. But when people like yo, if and on a Monday, go on the internet and look at Chicago killings this past weekend, and there's there's just there's a bunch. Every fucking week. Dude, I was just talking about this. The impressive thing about this in Chicago is that it is cold as fuck. Do you know how bad right you got to want to murder? <laughs> no, not right now. But it's not like the 380 of them happen in the summer, right? It's, uh, like, it's, true. Up. it's like, it's cold as fuck. You know how bad you got to want to murder people to be outside in minus 10? Like, <laughs> and still decide that, like, you have, you're still in the mood to murder? Like, with that kind of weather, bro, Dude. do you know how miserable you have to be? Or how determined? <laughs> Like that's a different level, bro. Like it might, it might, it might be a business decision. It's like, duh, like anytime, even like in all those murder shows, it's always in fucking Minnesota. And I'm like, okay, that it it, it adds up, right? Because it's it's you live in a miserable environment, and so it's kind of like people who use like the 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 what do you call it, the happy lamps in like the Pacific Northwest or in like Alaska they or whatever. Happy lamps. I for, it, it's I'm gonna use that. Is it, it like the shit that kind of wakes you up in the it, morning? It's not even just that, bro. It's like literally lamps that. Um, that simulate the sunlight because mm. there's these places that are dark most of the day. Like, like Seattle? So it's to like fight depression and all that. Yeah, yeah, okay. But it's like, so I get it. Like there's something to be said for like that misery that you're indoors, you don't have a lot to do, you're not getting a lot of sunlight. You're, right. You know, it's like, you're maybe not hanging out outside, you're not being as social or whatever. That just maybe makes people stir crazy and all that. But also like, shouldn't make you hate people because you're not around them because it's fucking freezing. You should be just be at home. Like why are you, you want to kill some? Like, you know, what kind of like mood you got to be in to pull a drive by in Chicago in the snow or when it's minus eighteen? <laughs> like we got to look into psychologically. No, like man. what is wrong with the people? In Listen, I got a solution, bro. Stop throwing salt on the street in the wintertime. Don't just let it let ride. Let that shit ride. Oh, let Mother Nature just do its thing. <laughs> let fucking Darwinism take control. <laughs> let fucking let the snow pile up. Nobody could drive. Yeah, man. I don't. I don't it's know, dude. it's. I mean, yeah, and then we, like you said, we don't really talk about that enough, man. It's like, what the, what, what, what's the, is that the murder capital of the U.S. right now, year to date? Ooh, good what question. What city is the murder capital? Like, because I don't know. It it sounds horrible, but what if like you know someone else is at like eight hundred, and then we're like, man, Chicago's not even halfway there. Got to get those numbers out. Those are rookie numbers. It's got to be Chicago. All right, let's see. Uh, murder map, deadliest U.S. cities. Let's see. 
Of course, they're gonna do a fucking countdown. Oh, jeez. I just want to. The- I just want to go to the end. <laughs> Who's fighting for number one? <laughs> Oh, We're so competitive. It, it, we I, would turn that into an article right? like that. I just stopped. I, I just stopped it randomly. Okay. Number 53, Patterson, New Jersey. Let's fucking go, <laughs> Jersey. Oh, wait. I just saw another Jersey one. It must be Jersey City Newark or some is in shit. There. Jersey Newark. City is that definitely in there. I don't know. All right, I'm going down to number Camden's one. in there. Come on, bitch. So, I, yeah, it's definitely in there. I can tell you right now, from Jersey, it's going to Trenton, Camden, uh, uh, or Cherry Hill, however they want to call that area. Ooh, um, you, you are North? not going to. All right, let's let's go. Go let's, ahead. N- number one. I know my people. St. Louis, Missouri. Number one is St. Louis. Wow. Damn it. With six, what the fuck? With 64.54 murders per 100,000 residents. Damn, what so, the so, fuck so, is so, happening so a murder St. Louis, rate, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, number two, Baltimore. Three, Birmingham, Alabama. I got a story about Alabama today, too. Three, Birmingham, Alabama? How the, many there? There's not. There can't be a lot of people in Birmingham, so they're just killing each other. Um, 50.62 per 100,000. That's They think it's the Hunger it's the Games, rate. though. They actually think they're trying to, like, make it's it out. The, it's the purge. <laughs> it's the, yeah. They don't know it's against the law there yet. The news hasn't made it there. The fucking horse is on its way with the, with the note. <laughs> well, apparently they still got slaves over there, too, so... <laughs> Sorry, we'll get into that, people. Um, number four, Detroit, Michigan. Okay. Number five, Still. Dayton, Ohio. Dayton? Fucking six, Baton Rouge. Seven, Louisiana. I'm sorry, uh, New Orleans. New Orleans. Louis- New Orleans. Okay. Um, Kansas City, Missouri. Memphis, Tennessee. And to round out the top ten, Cleveland, Ohio. So the ones in Louisiana are the only warm weather cities. The rest of them are miserable fucking places. Um, I have- Chicago is 28. Wow, so it's not even, overall Chicago's not even it, the the problem with the South they got Side. More it's, people, it's a bro. neighborhood is very concentrated. Yeah, I was yeah, gonna yeah. say that's what it is, bro. If yeah. you go to the South Side of Chicago, that's party number one. So what is it? What is it? Yeah, yeah. I guess what is it in, in terms of like if you're counting year to date, just people who has oh, the most I, I like don't, that. I'm not sure. Let me see. Because I've been to a good chunk of those cities, not all of them, but I've been to a good chunk of the ones you just mentioned. I've been to Baltimore. I've been to New Orleans. Um, what was the other Detroit? Um, all the ones in Jersey, pretty much. Those one, uh, I haven't been a date in Ohio. There's really no reason for anyone to go to Ohio. Like you do go back to Ohio, right? Like that's that's some place where you like you where you were from, so you got to go back there because of whoever in your family decided not to leave. Yeah, like I don't know like, anyone that goes on vacations. Yeah, yeah, none of us are going on vacation in Ohio or even Michigan. It's like people from Michigan are so proud, but it's like I've never heard anyone saying I'm moving to Michigan who wasn't from there. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. Like, I can't. I can't. You can't find the number. Yeah, but either way, I think Chicago is because it's it's probably because it's concentrated to a, a neighborhood, right? It's, it's yeah. So so, so, yeah, so yeah, like yeah. I did see and, and, and they, they, they actually broke down um, like by na- by South Side neighborhood. Mm. And so there's actually, and, and and I don't know, I don't know the neighborhoods there, so it wouldn't make any sense to me. So yeah. there's, there's definitely some neighborhoods that are really high, and some of neighborhoods that are lower. But it was all like South Side Chicago Sh- neighborhoods. Should they stop printing those lists because then they just get competitive about it? <laughs> 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 like guys are stupid, right? Like we'll see a list on there, we'll be like, bro, did you see those guys yeah. from Lincoln Park are really <laughs> pulling up, pulling away? <laughs> we gotta go kill four or five people this weekend again, <laughs> tie this thing up. <laughs> <laughs> and in Birmingham is fucking wild, but like Birmingham, I didn't even think there was enough people in Birmingham to murder. Like that you would run into anybody, but fuck do I know? I mean, I, I guess it is one of the largest. It's know, the man. largest city probably in Alabama. But, but since we're talking about Alabama, man, I got to tell you about this shit. So Alabama, the uh, the Alabama Department of Corrections mm-hmm. is farming out prisoners to corporations and corporations that we um, deal with on a daily basis. Wait, they're not making like just license plates? No. Um, So companies like McDonald's, Wendy's, Golden Corral, you know, like restaurants like that. So, so essentially, they have a program. That's why the ice cream machine never works, bro. They (laughs) They have a program. They took it. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. There's a program for... uh, for nonviolent misdemeanor convictions, mm-hmm. right? If you just so if you're nonviolent, so 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 you were selling weed, 
Okay. Right? You get arrested, whatever, okay. right? They have this work release program. Um, where you get to be in in a little bit better facilities because apparently um, Alabama has one of like the most overcrowded prison systems. So they have this thing where you in a better facility, you also get seventy two hour passes to see your family. Um, but and, but you get, but and you get to work. I should say and you get to work at one of these places. Okay. When you work there, you're you're getting. Um, Seven twenty-five an hour. That's their minimum wage because they they, okay. they they don't have a state minimum wage, so they go by the federal minimum wage, which I believe is there's no an state hour. minimum wage in Alabama. That's what they, that's, that's what it says. Is that because the politicians aren't smart enough to figure out what that even is? Possibly. What, okay, that's okay. so. But out of that seven twenty-five, the state takes forty percent pre-tax. Um, plus you got to pay for transportation fees. Laundry fees and any court fees, dude. They're making four hundred and fifty million dollars a year from prison labor. That they're making. They're making now. To make this even further Jeez. is you can't you can't quit. Sometimes you got to work six seven days a week. Okay. You can't really stop. You can't really decide. I don't want to do that anymore. Because there's consequences. You could be thrown in the hole, which is the you know solitary confinement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other shit that's crazy about this is that in 2022, 235 of these nonviolent misdemeanor conviction people that are on this work release program were denied parole. Prop and what? Man, what is that number in comparison to like the people that would be in, I guess, the rest of the population? Like, you know what I mean? Like for what us to mean? know that that's bad, we would have to know what the normal rate is. Because you're saying essentially, I guess, I, I guess I'm how not I saying th- rate though. I'm saying, I'm saying, if you are, if you have a nonviolent misdemeanor, yeah, okay, and you and and you have qualified. To not only work in a in a in the public sector, yes, also get seventy two hour passes to go home and be with your family, right? It's kind of crazy you get a field trip, but you can't get you can't get paroled. So you are you have proven that you can work in society, uh, you can get the fucking passes, but you can't get paroled, bro. Yeah, because yeah, well, because they're gonna lose that labor and the. That, well, we, you mean, know what I'm saying, man. The minute like, you privatize prisons, I think we kind of understood it, that that's it, it was like yeah, yeah like, like like the minute we started privatizing prisons, like we understood it was a business at that point in time, and like yeah. any other business, it works off volume and like. You know, if you don't have the volume, in this case, the people, like, right. so the less people, the less money you make. Right. And so it doesn't, it, it doesn't really behoove them to, to let people go or. Dude, is that, and, and, and again, I'm, I'm rehabilitating I'm not, now, that. Yeah. So, so we can, A, like, what are prisons really for, right? Is mm-hmm. it, is, is it for deterrence? Is it for rehabilitation? Or because it's privatized now in a lot of, in a lot of places, is it a business? And then, I mean, does, it is, that, yeah. does that tie into, Letting in a bunch of illegal Im- immigrants because potentially these people might get arrested and be used for slave labor. Because it is legal to use them as. Yeah, you know I what think I'm saying? the problem like, with it, privatizing it in general is if you think about it in its simplest form, is that the business model is I make more per person. <laughs> and so per person means I need people to commit crime. That's right. Or I need people to be in jail and maybe not necessarily commit. A certain amount of crime. I just, just need you to be here. People and need so to be you, here. Yeah, and then now you're talking about corporations and people that own prisons who have pool, who I'm sure have lobbyists, who I'm sure have you know seats on boards. Um, you know, like it just compounds into like people are gonna do sort of the, the favors or the quid pro quo, you know, things. So it it's just and you you figure like you figure like corporations like like uh, I just I'll just go fast food chains. They're not trying to pay a lot, right? Because that yeah. la- that that labor, to be fair, is not worth a lot. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. I could be talked into this. The capitalist in me, as you just said, fast food. If it takes the Big Mac meal from like fourteen dollars back down to seven, twenty. Um, yeah, it's fucking expensive now. 
but now if you're using prison labor, if you bring it back down to like seven bucks, like it used to be, I could be I'm, talking I'm into in. this. I'm saying, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be like, should have been driving over the speed limit. <laughs> Whatever the fuck you were doing. Shouldn't have been, been jaywalking. <laughs> It's the people that go in for dumb shit where you're just like, bro, and I didn't even know that was a crime. <laughs> that's the thing, man. When you go, if it's a nonviolent misdemeanor, right, then you go, okay, these people are not necessarily a threat to society. If they have proof. Now, I get it. Like, if you go in for that and you got to you gotta pay your you gotta pay your price, you know, I, I get it. But if you, if you are that and then they go, hey, we can put you on this program, we're going to take the 40 percent and we're going to pay these fees, but you can earn a wage and you do this for X amount of time. And then it's a wrap. Like, like, like if you do this for X amount of time and with no infractions, the first time you're up for parole, you will get it. Yeah, you would think you can build that into the You program, should be able to build it in, man. I, that's what I'm saying. And, and it seems like in this case, and I, I saw several interviews with, with, uh, with former inmates, and, and they were like, yo, like it's, it's very much like slave labor where you, you know, if they need you six days, seven days, you just you have to do it. You can't really say no. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm exhausted, it doesn't fucking matter. I mean, what like, else are they doing, though? <laughs> I want my weekend. <laughs> I need weekends off. I need weekends off. <laughs> Bro, I I haven't thought this point through, so I'm sure there's plenty of holes in it. But I, I like them as I, as you're talking. I'm thinking, d- should we? What is the downside to just you shouldn't go to prison unless it's a violent crime or unless you think. Um, unless it's a safety issue to the public, right? Like, I got to keep you out so that you're not a harm to yourself or the public. Yeah. And then, like, go is the is the solution to be anti-prison on anything that is a non-violent crime? That doesn't mean it's non-punishment, but the non-prison. Like, you right, know, like, right, right, why right. we have white-collar prisons, quote-unquote, like, people, you know, we joke about that shit all the time, like the Martha Stewart prison. It's like, why is that even a thing? Why is it? Yeah, that's true. Should it just be fines or probation? or pro- Like, I'm sure we can find a way to punish people that's like, ah, oh, fuck. And I know people are going to be like, well, the highest form of punishment is, like, taking someone's freedom away. But at the end of the day, that just tells me more that you're not for either. A, if the idea isn't to rehabilitate them, Right. Then then the flip side of the, you know, like rehabilitate mean if you are an addict and, you know, like then the the princess or whatever, maybe they rehabilitate you and get you back into the world. And, you know, hopefully you're not whatever stealing shit to, to pay for drugs or whatever got you in jail. But then the, the flip side of that is like, but if you're a, a, a violent criminal, then the idea to have you locked up is really more for the safety of the public and not right. necessarily you. And, and maybe you're part of that. But should prison just be. For that, and not for the guy selling weed, and not for. And I know the like, like I can think of like the the the, the holes in the argument are going to be like, well, what's to keep someone from doing X, and what's to keep someone, right? And we can find what that thing is that is sort of a a, a more of an incentive, I guess, or equally as an incentive as like I don't want to go to jail. Like, yeah, I'm sure we could. I just think that, and and that's not. I mean, that's a it's a good point. I just think that you can't have. You can't privatize prisons because prisons aren't supposed to be there to be profitable. No. Well, that's the issue, period, right, is the fact that we have private. Now, I'm going to talk out of both sides of my mouth here because I believe in anything is better if you privatize. Excuse me. Like, agree. I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, yeah. Like, the government I think, is, the I government think is very inefficient. should all be privatized, I think. And now, I, I think they should be government funded. But I think they should be privatized, right? Like to me, let Microsoft and Google duke it out and run schools, and then we get to decide where we want to put in our kids. You create competition. You create, I think, in turn, you create a better product, which means you know, better education, better everything. Like I'm pro fucking privatizing everything. The thing with the prisons is that, again, because you're getting paid almost like per prisoner, or sorry, your business sort of succeeds with with volume and volume is people and you know it's like that's a little sketch or not a little that's definitely sketch it's weird and and it's it's weird that we even allow it like i understand hiring a company because you want to sort of not take up your resources as a government right and so you're going to outsource prison just feels like it should be a thing that isn't outsourced like i don't i don't know it's just one no no yeah i'm with you on that bro 
Bro, talk, talk to me about what's up with this uh, Ohio murder suspect. This is, this, this, this you were on, talking about that guy. This this that we people killing, killing and, ba- gang, gang. Let's go. So, bro, this guy in Ohio, uh, I want to get his name, Antonio Riano. He had been uh, hiding from authorities for twenty years, uh, <laughs> following the Kudos shooting to that death. Guy. Yeah, he he was he was sort of the, a major suspect in a shooting death outside of his local bar. Um, and he and, and it was in Hamilton, Ohio, and he left behind a family and three children. And he was caught finally in his hometown where where he committed everything. Yeah. Working as a police officer or working, sorry. Yeah, working as a police officer Get in his hometown. That's how he got caught. Under an alias? Yeah. I doesn't appear to be that way. Well, I'm I'm assuming it was, right? Because it's yeah, it would have be, to be but something. yeah. But yeah, he's the guy that they're looking for, and he worked for them for 20 years. And you imagine this motherfucker's like walking by his posters every day. <laughs> he's like, I think we're on to him. <laughs> Thin blue line, <laughs> protect the blue you guys. Know, you know what would be <laughs> great if he did fucking 20 years and retire and got a pension? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just goes to show how much cops don't hold each other accountable. <laughs> Everybody you probably do everything. They're like, you know, Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't mean it. He didn't. <laughs> Those people shouldn't have been fucking with him. <laughs> it's funny as fuck. You know how shitty you have to be as a police department to not catch the fugitive. That- Bro, you remember that movie with Martin Lawrence where he where he uh, he hides like the jewels and the fucking vent system and he has to go back as a the cop to bring it. Uh, Blue streak. <laughs> Blue streak. That's. <laughs> El gato. El gato and mis pantalones. Bro, it made me think of that shit. I'm like, bro, this is like Blue Streak, Martin Lawrence. <laughs> the movie's fucking hilarious. So, like, it what would be something out of that. He said he's like, El gato, los pantalones. Yeah, los pantalones. <laughs> it's so oh, good. It's, it's tango, tango, El gato, El ga- los pantalones. <laughs> Oh fuck, bro! I like this is either uh, uh, an impressive display of how police protect their own, uh, or Holy shit. how idiotic they can be, yeah. or this guy's just an amazing hider and he's the hide and seek champ of the world, or like there's just so many angles here. <laughs> Dude, you know what? You say he was 20 years, man. I wonder if he was literally like months away from like retirement. <laughs> Bro, he's about to get his pension. He's yeah, yeah. He's about- you think he's gonna move to Canada? <laughs> they're about to throw him a party. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, they're gonna be looking at the cake with his face on it, going, "Man, that shit looks familiar." <laughs> <laughs> it's a cold case here. We've been trying to solve for a long time. <laughs> oh my god, dude, man. what's going on with the uh, Kentucky woman? Oh, I gotta find uh, uh, where'd she go? Oh, she stole. Oh, wait, 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 where'd she go? I feel like I lost her story. Oh, got it. So, um. She steals a car, bro, with a child inside of it. Yeah. And yeah, sorry, and I had multiple things, but she steals a car with a child inside of it and gets caught, gets arrested, you know, uh, t- typical whatever, lead the, leads police on a chase. Yeah, so yeah. to catch her, nobody gets hurt, whatever. But when they catch her, it was like what she said led her to do it that made it fucking hilarious. Now, how old is this kid? Um, it's, like a, it's, like it's, it's in a car seat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So like infant. So it's like an infant or toddler. Oh, toddler right? Like, yeah, yeah. So she goes, uh, she claims that Kanye West telepathically told her to steal a car with, and but it had to be a car specifically with a child inside. And she claims that Kanye West got in her head telepathically and told her to do this. And I was like, or you're schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know that. <laughs> But it's weird how she went telepathy. <laughs> it was like either you're batshit crazy and you're schizophrenic and your your inner voice is Kanye West's voice. And then it's like, yo, is he singing? Is he like, I'm trying to think of all the Kanye West bangers. Like, how you know it's Kanye? Does it just sound like him? Is it close? Or is he, or you know, like, or is he saying some shit that is like a Kanye West-esque? Dude, Kanye has a few things, man, that, that has been like, sort of like, Hip hop culture, right? Like, yeah. like, like when he when he said uh, Bush doesn't like black people, 
That shit was That was for when like, the, uh, uh, the Katrina. Katrina Yeah Katrina, And it was an right? iconic line that It was, is Yeah People well, he's, it in songs He's on a fucking He's on like this broadcast Where they're trying to get money For Katrina And he just goes Bush doesn't like black people The best part about that whole shit Was Mike Myers It's fucking The guy who plays Austin Powers Yeah yeah He was next to him When he said that Was that, that shit. him? Yeah And he's just looking like looking The <laughs> fuck is happening right now I just want to raise money For the people drowning <laughs> But he did that. He did the shit, you know, on stage with uh, with Taylor Swift. Oh my God, bro! You know where he's like, "Oh, Beyonce has one of the greatest videos ever." Yeah, it, the fucking the Jews thing. I mean, Kanye's been Kanye. The, the fact yeah, that he has his wife walking around naked all the time. <laughs> he's but well now apparently he's taking over people's that thoughts. Yeah, he's taking, no, but the funny shit is I read that and I went, I could see Kanye doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I go, I don't even necessarily think she's lying. <laughs> At first I went, she's schizophrenic, but I was like, but also, maybe not. if this shit was possible, <laughs> fucking Kanye would do it. <laughs> I was like, maybe this bitch is on to something. <laughs> so, you know, he got to get his minions. He got, I was like, yeah, the, the, he done lost support of his whole fucking clan. Uh, he doesn't have Adidas anymore. So, you know, he, he lost those German soldiers. So now he's got to, he's got to build up a new army. Let's do it. <laughs> Speaking of fucking taking over minds, man, I saw this movie this weekend. <laughs> I gotta tell you about this shit, bro. So Netflix, for those of you who are into like like horror flicks, okay, um, listen up. So there's a new movie on Netflix. It's called The Deliverance. Not okay. To, not to be confused with the old movie Deliverance. You know, with the with the country guys, okay. squeal like a pig. You know that. Yeah, whole shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a remake of that. It's a new movie. Um, and it is about a family that rents a house and then the house got like spirits in it and they all get possessed and whatever. So if you're into that kind of shit, you know, it's definitely, uh, it's worth watching what I, what, as I'm watching the movie at the very end of the movie, it was based on a true story, by the way. Okay. And so at the end of the movie, they show the mom. So it's like the mom with like three kids. Okay. Um, they show the, the real life mom and they show her name. Okay. And then they show the house. And bro, right away, I recognize the fucking house. Oh no! Oh, you like you remember the house? Like like I like, recognize the house from some from from something way. that I saw. Okay. Years ago, so I'm a I'm I am a fan of of uh, of of like horror flicks. Okay, and and, and, yeah. and the ones that the creepiest ones are always like the spiritual ones. This is like, like The Exorcist, that De definitely one of my favorites. Um, yeah, the, the Conjuring, the Conjuring, movie. Yeah, 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 Conjuring. Yeah, one the, of the stuff one of my that favorites. feels like it could be real. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, years ago, we saw. So my wife and I are both into kind of like the horror flicks, right? Years ago, we saw a movie called Demon House. Okay. Dude, and it's not a it, it's not a movie. It's a documentary. Oh yeah, it's about a, and it's a documentary about this guy who does like he's like a paranormal investigator, and he buys this house in Indiana, sight unseen, because he knows that this thing has a history, or as the stories have told, he has a history of these paranormal shit that happens there. So okay. the Demon House is a documentary that follows him and his crew as they investigate this place. So I'm not not gonna give away any anything if y'all want to go out and watch it, you know, you know, at your own risk, man. Because I will say, it is one of the. It's not necessarily scary. It's really fucking creepy, and it is something that has, like, the the memories of watching that has have stayed with me since I've watched it. And I want to say I watched it probably. I don't know, six, seven years ago. Why did it stay? Just. It's fucking creepy, bro. It's, just, it's not okay. scary. It just left uh, 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 an impression it, on you that. Yeah. Okay. And so the, the, and, and the biggest thing about the house was just like anyone who has ever had any kind of dealings with the house, including this guy's crew, has, it has had negative impacts on them in some way, shape, or form. Gotcha. Do it. Okay. So hold on. No, so, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So I watched this shit. And I, when I see the house, I immediately know. I'm like, that's the fucking house from that, from that documentary that we saw. Uh, okay. So my wife looks it up. And sure enough, it is, it is the one. It's the, and for some reason, I, I had like Detroit in my head. But it wasn't. I was wrong. It was, it's, in, it's in Indiana. I can't remember where in Indiana. And they probably did that 
by on purpose just because it is a known house and I'm, I'm sure that the selection of that house was on purpose for that movie for the for which movie for the for the one you just watched to deliver it's probably yeah yeah because they probably thought oh this one is actually known for oh this. maybe use it and you know i wonder i wonder how popular that 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 documentary demon house was mm -hmm. i don't i don't know i just know that like it it is it is literally the creepiest fucking thing that I've ever seen. As a matter of fact, before the movie starts, there's a disclaimer that says something about, and, I, and don't quote me on this, but something about like, um, almost like paranormal activity is known to come through different like mediums and TVs are one of those mediums. Watch this at your own risk. And this is on Netflix, this Demon House thing? I don't know where it is now. You're going to make me I watch this feel, shit now. No, Damn it. Dude, and I'm telling you, I don't even, dude, to be honest, bro, I don't even recommend anybody watching it. It's bad? It's not bad. It's, it's, it's good. It's interesting. It's fucking creepy. But I will say it's the only movie that I can remember that had me, like, throughout the night. I, I woke up several times. I didn't see nothing. Oh, I didn't yeah, yeah, feel you, nothing. You, it just mentally, it just your mentally head. Uh, fucked me for like an evening. I want to see it more now by myself. Yeah, I know. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> should have fucking told me this, bro. As soon as this pod's over, guess what? I'm going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't watch it tonight, man. Maybe, bro, maybe later on. I, it's just funny, man. You said I, I stayed in... Um, I, I love paranormal shit. Yeah. And what I, and it's funny, bro. Fucking Muslims don't have... Uh, exorcisms, right? It only exists in the oh, Catholic really? Like, really. I don't know. I'm okay. just saying. I never, there's no movie. Oh, there's no movie with people exorcism. asking Allah to pull demons out, right? It's always fucking Listen, Catholics. Maybe, maybe we should all, maybe we should all go that way. <laughs> but, but do, do I, 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 I'm just, I just happen to pick Muslims off the top of my head. I could pick any religion that's not Catholic, and I don't know an that's instance true. of exorcisms. But, but anyway, um, I, I fucking I, I love that shit. I'm all into that shit. I, I, I believe in it. I don't know if it's supernatural. I don't know if it's mental illnesses that these people are right. whatever the quote unquote possess. I, I don't know what I don't give a fuck. It's entertaining to me, right? But um Ah oh, fuck where was I going with this? The 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 idea that there could be something, I guess, is entertaining. And so that alone it gets us it's it's why we watch like those fucking ghost hunter shows or the paranormal activities or like yes. you know and then the like why you were more likely to watch that movie probably or or feel some type of way about it because it was already on this in this documentary that you happen to recognize that sort of like fuck with you where you were like, I don't like this, shut the shit off. Like the it, it still it's funny, man, because I think the rational part of us can go like it's probably not probably not a good idea, <laughs> but it just fucking <laughs> lives like rent free and our dude. I stayed in it, it, so where I was going was like I like this shit. I stayed in New Orleans one one time, uh, um, been a few times, and one of the times I stayed, I stayed in what was considered quote unquote the most haunted place in New Orleans. Okay. And New Orleans is full of you know a lot of rich history and all that stuff, and there's a lot of like haunted tours, sort of like St. Augustine here. So you said um, you stayed in. So a... I stayed in what is considered the most haunted place in New Orleans. It was a hotel. Hotel. Okay. And in the hotel, there's certain floors and rooms or whatever they're considered daunted. And I fucking, I went on take tickets to the max, right? So I stayed in a creep, in a room that's supposed to be, you know, like on the most haunted floor of the hotel, yada, yada. And it's cool. The, ho the hotel does a great job of keeping like original uh, sort of like doorknobs and oh, fixtures okay. and that sort of thing. Like modern room, but they leave a lot of things around to sort of remind you that the hotel has been there for a very long time. Fucking awesome hotel. I the whole time, of course, am trying to fucking like mock these ghosts or like call shit out. So you I want something like, to move? Yeah, I'm talking shit the whole time. I like, I like, hey, spirits, it's your boy. <laughs> like, we back from hurricanes. You be like, baby, <laughs> like we're, baby take the picture. <laughs> take yeah, the hugging picture. there. <laughs> <laughs> but I was talking so much shit, doing stuff, trying, just thinking like something would show up or let me see a thing. Not a goddamn thing, not a draft, not not a chills, not nothing. And I was so disappointed because I go, if I'm ever going to see anything, because again, I'm it all in. here. I don't know what the haunted thing is or I don't know what the exorcism thing is. I, I or, or like I, I say, I believe in it. I don't know what I believe in. I believe it that it's a thing and whatever causes it, you know, causes it, whether it's a mental illness, whether it's people fucking like whatever. I don't know. But. The, the shit's fascinating to me. 
And I was in that hotel the whole fucking time, like, let's go. And for like and three nothing. nights, I didn't see a goddamn thing. Ah, I was so mad. That sucks. Yeah, yeah, because you go like, and it's funny, the hotel gave off eerie feelings, but also they just did a good job. Again, it's an old hotel. They did a good job keeping old stuff. So like, it was like eerie, but not in a, I'm uncomfortable, get me out of here. It was like, I'm curious, like what is happening here? And maybe yeah, I'm fucked yeah. up. Um, not maybe, I know I'm fucked up. And so maybe that was my perception because I do know other people who stayed there who were like, nah, place gave me the creeps, I left. And I was like, really? Like, I found <laughs> oh my myself God. so fascinated the whole time. This hotel dude does these traditional things that come from like old stories of, of like old travelers of like every night at a certain time, they do peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the lobby. Okay. And, and, it, and it was fucking awesome. It sounds- Why peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? It, it's, there's a whole story behind it and some traveler and the, they made sandwiches for these guys okay. and whatever. So like, they give you the whole background when they do it. Um, and I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but you go to the lobby at this time, there's a fucking giant spread of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that were phenomenal. Yeah. And then, you know, whatever, like milk and all this shit. And you know, you find yourself down there and then you're reading the story and there, you know, there's people telling it and whatever that work there. And you're just kind of like, I feel like I'm in this time. You're in it. And whatever. But never saw but anything. Nothing. Bro, and I was talking shit. You know, like <laughs> going like, is there's a spirit in this? You know, I was doing the whole paranormal activity thing. Give me a sign. And yeah. I was just sitting there in silence. Bro, now if something comes up and throws you across the room, do you leave? I mean, probably, <laughs> but I'm kind of hyped. <laughs> it touched me. I'm like, let's fucking go. <laughs> so here's one thing that I, that I, when I watched this thing, and it, I don't know why this thought came to me, right? So there, there are two scenes in this Deliverance movie, not to be confused with Demon House. So Deliverance is a movie, right? About, the Deliverance. <laughs> sorry, the, yeah, the, the Deliverance is the movie about the family that rented this place, um, where the son climb literally backwards climbs the fucking wall okay like, so like exorcist style of- like no like well like spider-man spider-man okay yep, think, I know exactly think, what you think mean. spider-man yep. right he fucking backs up and he climbs and just, yeah yeah and he and he backs up and you're right okay and then the daughter fucking levitates okay okay and then there's also a, a portion where the where the son um essentially changes form so like appears as someone else so he like shape shifts into whatever yes okay so i'm as i'm watching this i'm going yo does that mean that humans are capable of defying gravity and shape shifting right because because even if you believe in 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 uh, other entities overtaking a body yeah what they're doing you're still in the human body so what they're doing is defying what we know what what we know as physics right oh i see what you're saying because like like when you watch like uh, i'm trying to think of like any fucking hunting movie correct or exorcism movie the person's doing like shit like they're doing their neck and right. they're, they're doing things they're to or us they're, are supposed or to they're le- or impossible. they're levitating right or they're fuck right uh, and so i'm going like yo like is does that mean that that like the human body is capable of doing those things and we you know like our whatever we want to call it is it, is it your soul your spirit whatever we don't know how to unlock that within our own bodies yeah, it's like anything else like i guess our limitations are sort of set by what we know and then what we're willing to, like if you don't you know it's kind of like if you don't use it you lose it kind of thing mm-hmm. like is it or is it that, that shit, you know, like, they, like, like, like they say that it's, um, we only use a certain, you know, a very low percentage of our brains. Yeah. Right. If, if you, if you use more of your brain, can you do that? Can we, can we defy gravity? Can you fly? Can you levitate? Can you climb walls? Probably like, not. But who knows? But you never know. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. but it, it, there, there's so many of these stories of, of people that are being possessed that talk in other languages yeah, and yeah. and levitate and so like these are sto- these are these are stories that have been told throughout human history and 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 even recent human history like like this story this story is 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 recent we you know it's, it's it's within our lifetime so like i was just thinking about that man just going like yo like this is it's just something else that I, that i wonder the, the human body can do a lot more than we think and we just maybe we're just unable to unlock it because we're primitive or do we are we scared to 
you know, we're scared to turn our neck past a certain point because like, no, it's going to break after that. Or our legs aren't meant to go back that far. And, and but we, in but actuality, actually can. can't, you know, like if you think of like a very flexible gymnast or, you know, like a circus performer or whatever, they right, do weird right. shit, like, you know, is it something like that? But the fucking, the, whatever has overcome you has sort of removed that, that restriction, I guess, from your mindset. Right, I don't know. Right, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. Man. If we've had way but, too much to drink, now we're talking about uh, fucking. <laughs> well, you can fucking you can you can check out that shit. The demon, the the, the deliverance. So, would you recommend watching it? Um, if, I mean, if you're into if you're into that shit, like I said, I think it was. My kids are like really into horror movies right now, so I've been watching the stuff that's like a sort of. Quote, I mean, none of it's appropriate for them, but just appropriate in terms of like the age bracket. Like, I try not to show them anything where people are fucking. Like, I think that's sort of like my rule when it comes to like. Yeah, I don't think the anybody, horror I'm stuff. I'm pretty sure nobody's. Fucking it's like this they one. could be rated R, like the Conjuring's rated R, but it's mostly because it's like frightening and yep. you know so there there isn't anything. Has she watched that? Yeah, my daughter loves. The, the country, country. and so does really my son. Good, like I, I've let him watch that. Like, like yeah, I think I draw the line right now. Is what I'm doing. It's like nothing vulgar. Like I don't like, like you know, they know like I curse, right? Like so I would. I, they they watch stuff where people curse, but it's like I don't watch. I, I don't like them watching stuff where people sort of unnecessarily are vulgar or. Um, you know, because I go, I go like like I, I I don't know if it's just my justification, but what I'll say is like. I curse in my normal I try not to curse every other word obviously but like I do that's just how I talk yep. and so I don't censor myself when I talk to my kids but in my normal course of work I wouldn't say vulgar shit like I wouldn't be out there like yo suck my dick you know what I mean like like right, it's just right, not right. like and so like I try to keep them away from that is sort of like my I guess rule right now if you will but um but as when yeah, it comes so to it's, horror movies, so it's, it's not, mostly just shit yeah, like that. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 not it's, it's not, not vulgar that. like that. So we watch Tarot uh, or Terry, whatever the fuck you want to call it, and then they watch um, Night Swim and then another one recently. Yeah, so they were one. all decent. So I'm gonna have to add the Deliverance to that uh, to see what what they think. Yeah, Maybe the, they'll be like the the Demon House. Like I said, man, I watched it. I'm, I'm glad I watched it. It's fucking creepy, and and it and and it. It sort of stayed with me. Like okay. I remember details about that even years and years later, where I still look back at that and I go, that is the creepiest fucking thing I've ever seen. It is not a, doesn't have any jump scares. There's nothing that crazy that happens in the movie per se, where it's like, oh my God, that was scary. No, it's none of that. But there's so much creepy shit that happens in that movie and it's all real. It's all like, it's because like in, in the house, he sets up cameras everywhere. And then so what, people that are in the house just end up doing weird shit. And then he kind of goes back and is like, oh, look at, you know, look at Juan going over there and staring at the fucking wall. And then somebody goes over to you and goes like, yo, what are you doing? And then, and then you kind of snap to and you go, what? Yeah, what are you Nothing, talking about? What are you, what are you talking about? Uh, I'm good. It's shit. That's kind of fun. It's shit like that. And then, and then at the very end, he ends up barricading himself in the house because he wants to spend a night there. Uh, so it's like, so, uh, what do you call that? There's a name for that type of horror, but it's like there isn't, you know, there isn't anything over the top or anything. But it's like it's almost like these are things that you can sort of envision yourself in, or scenarios you can envision yourself in, or oh, not yeah. even that you can envision yourself in, but like they're you, there that you like, like we're we're trained to sort of be afraid of the dark from birth, right? Right. And so it, it there are things that whether we sort of consciously or subconsciously recognized in our brain we're sort of scared of and it's like the person staring into the wall is scarier to us than if we would have just saw the creature run by the room we'd have been like yeah oh fuck like but we know like we be like better go get a gun or get whatever more mode of defense you have in your house to, to kill that thing if your friend like if you were sitting there and you just started staring at the wall i'd be like what the, the fuck, fuck is, is happening right now <laughs> and then it would creep me the fuck out i'd probably leave you know what i mean so like, it's a lot of that okay yeah and that shit i think is more it, it's more horrific to us because i think it fucks with our psyche more because yeah. it feels real because you go even if it, it's not a scenario where it's haunted. I think we can place ourselves in a scenario where that would happen to us. And, you and go, it could be because that. you're spaced out and you just go, yo, yeah, yo, yeah like, fuck, fuck that. that. I'm yeah, out. yeah. I, I think it hits too close to home because it feels That's like, what it is. Yeah. But there's, there's a lot of things in that movie where you just go like, yeah, bro, nah, fuck that, man. Those are the best kind of horror movies to me, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's like, fuck that. Because uh, uh, it's, it's, ne it's usually something that isn't far-fetched. 
And then I think oh, something yeah. that lives in the core in the back of our brain of like, yo, if this should happen, it would freak me the fuck out. And those little like subtle things like that are always way fucking creepier than just like yeah. the over the top, you know, like fucking serial killer or a creature or whatever. Like the mental warfare is always like like a little Dude, bit. Dude, there's there's one scene in that in that demon house where they're they're down in the basement where the basement is kind of like where the shit is kind of maybe strongest or okay. maybe where it originated. I don't know, but. Um, there's they, they bring in like this old family old family that used to live there and then and, then, and they're down there and it's like the mom and the son <laughs> and the daughter or whatever right so they're there and then at one point um, they, they're just talking okay. and and the mom is talking to the, the, the guy who's doing the, the documentary and then she just goes she turns to her son and she goes stop and then he he's he later on rolls the camera back and he goes yo look like she because he when she goes stop the son goes what i didn't i didn't, I didn't do anything she gets hit and it's uh, not by him so you can see her like body you move. see her kind of like and, and then like 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 stop like shoot her son away and he and then he kind of like laughs and he's like i didn't do nothing to you Dude, that so shit's creepy though Because just right now If I showed shit, you like bro. bro stop doing that And you didn't do anything You'd be like What the fuck is happening right yeah, now Yeah like, yeah Like because it fucks with you Mentally man So that's, that's it's shit. So it's that kind of It's that oh, kind man. of movie Alright I'm in I'm, I'm gonna have to watch it Just cause I like creepy don't, shit don't, man. don't watch it bro Don't watch it don't, I'll don't take your it. word for it <laughs> Fuck it I'm not watching it Um I guess what I do wanna watch Cause you've got me intrigued Is the fuck happened With Kim Jong Un This Ooh, week Ooh yes 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 Kim Jong Un, who is the the I don't even what 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 is he? Is he the is he the the ruler, the president, the fucking dictator? I guess the dictator of yeah, North Korea, the king or fucking yeah, yeah, whatever he is. So Kim Jong Un, um, this week or I don't know if it was this week or last week, he executed thirty three zero thirty of his officials. So Damn. North Korea had had some major major flooding. That killed four thousand people. Okay. And displaced fifteen thousand people. How would you know they're displaced if they're in North Korea? Well, those are those are their numbers. Isn't the entire country kind of this way? <laughs> That's their numbers. <laughs> and he he accused. They just left. <laughs> <laughs> they escaped. They escaped. They just got on fucking boats. They just fucking, fucking got yeah yeah. They they put on life vests and just let the fucking flood take them wherever it may be. <laughs> I think it's got to be better than here. <laughs> Dude, so the, these officials, man, he sort of like accused them of dereliction of duty, and he fucking executed okay thirty how, of them. I, I gotta know how because Kim Jong Un always does the illest shit. How he executes people? I don't know that that I don't know if he if he shot them or I, he, they, they just the the article I read says they, they that they were executed. They didn't say how. Um, you know that they, they they're also very like secretive on 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 what they do yeah, and yeah. how they do it. Um, yeah, but that, I just <laughs> but I was just like but I was like yo, is it better? Like you know what, man? You know how sometimes you're in your you're in a job. And you got people around you yeah. who don't fucking pull their weight. Yeah, yeah. And there's no consequences. Yeah. And they stay and they and these people usually stay around for way too long. Yeah, and if you don't have that guy, you're that guy. <laughs> if you're listening to this and going like, no, my job doesn't have that, that's good, you're that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in North Korea, he just goes, Nah, you didn't do your job, you're dead. That's fucking crazy, bro. It's insane. It also speaks to like, fuck, man. I, I'm trying, like, if you, if you live there, is mm -hmm. it a blessing to get picked to be on the cat? Because you know it's inevitably coming to an end in some way, shape, or form. That's probably ugly. Like because this is yeah, 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 yeah. So do you strive for that? Because you're like, well, fuck it. That's still better than the life I live now. Or do you? Ah, fuck! Do you view these people as tra like like as traitors because they're clearly not like? Who knows, man? Again, I, I don't know if I don't know I don't know what it's like to be brought up in 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 that kind of environment with that kind of government with that kind of structure, right? Like, who knows, bro? Might have figured it out. Like, 
j- just like I don't know, man. If you're trying to get people to follow you and fear you and yeah. do all this stuff, it's like it's fucked up thing. But does anybody do it better than Kim Jong Un, bro? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> he Apparently might need to write a book on he how got to a, do this. He got a whole country. How to control your fucking millions of people? One hundred and one needs to come from this guy, bro. Because like those people, like we think he's fucked up, right? But those people thoroughly believe that this guy won every gold medal at the Olympics this year. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's a weird. It's a really weird situation. I'm actually curious of. Okay, so there's. There's 26 million people in North Korea. What? That's a way higher. 26, 26 million. million people yeah. in North. Fuck. But they don't know that there's a South or anything else. <laughs> right? not, I don't know what the fuck they like, know. They think they're in no, space. No, they know. And then they're like, <laughs> yeah, you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they know, bro. Mm. Remember, a lot of them try to escape. They had that one chick that bought that, that wrote the book. Yeah, yeah. That, but do you think if they try to escape, they're going back to tell a story? Or do you think they're just gone at that point in time? Like, yeah, gone I'm trying to take off. What? Yeah, do you think they're letting them back into civilization and mingling with the rest of the world if they were close to getting out? Like, bro, you should have seen it. I saw a fucking no. I, I think that if you, the if, side, if you it'll try like the most to common thing, if you try to escape, right, he's killing you. Mm-hmm. Isn't he the same guy that executes like his own family members? Ooh, I don't know. Is that is that accurate? I think he does, and he and he does it in the gangster way, super. That's why I was curious as he how he executed these people because I've seen him like feed his like the dogs or, or sorry, feed the people to his dogs. He like won't feed his dogs for a while, and then he'll use them as execution methods. Can't the fuck? What kind, what kind of dogs? Fucking Dobermans, I think is what it is. Yeah. Can you imagine getting ripped apart by Dobermans? Mm, by any, by even I don't give a fuck if it's wolves, if, if yeah. any kind of dog, bro. It's kind of a gangster way to run a country, bro. If you're him, you're a pudgy fat oh, dude yeah. with zero charisma. And somehow, and, and I say zero charisma, zero charisma in English, maybe, and fucking Korean, he's incredible, and they're just like, it is what it is. It's the guy, that's the guy. But that's the guy. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know, bro. How are we doing on time, bro? Fucking, we're an hour 16 into this already. All right, man, you want to end it with something? No. Uh, Talk to me about, okay. dude, let's, let's end it with something good, man. Talk yeah. to me about about, uh, about Dion. What's going on with Dion Sanders? Yo, bro, shout out Dion Sanders, man. Uh, I I know we talked about him on here a couple times in the past, and we've, we've made him our carbon footprint. Um, I saw this story, and um, I think because I know people in this scenario, because I, mean, I was a product of of, of sort of a, a young mom and all that stuff, it, it made Maybe that's why it resonated with me. Um, but Deion Sanders partnered with a local bank to help Colorado football players who have children um, okay. start accounts at the bank. And what he did was basically, if you have a child and you play on that team, he's putting two thousand one hundred and twenty-one dollars, so twenty-one twenty-one, into a bank account. It's in a five. It's a five two nine. Okay, for, for so your for child. The guys. And yes, and oh, it's for, for their child, for their education. And it was like every player on the team who had a child, they were getting that created. And if you joined that team or if you happen to end up having a child while you were on that team, that was happening for you. And it was through a sponsorship he did with a local bank that did that for his players. And it's like when you look at the sort of like like the landscape of college football and recruiting and all that stuff, it's like, man, that's one more thing that allows you to, to recruit and do that, right? Like, And that's like the, the capitalist in me. But the... The human being in me, the father in me, was moved by this because, you know, like his message to the players was having a child isn't a burden. It's an opportunity. And he said it's an opportunity to grow and get better as a man, you know, uh, you know, obviously as a woman, if you're a woman. But it's like and it's it just gives you an opportunity to tackle and challenges that you didn't have before and yeah. to just get better as a human being. And it's such a great perspective on parenting and it's so accurate and so true. And so like kids will make you, you could be the selfish, like for most people, you could be the most selfish human being on the planet. You could ha- be self-absorbed and self-centered and your life could be, you wake up on Saturdays and you do whatever you want. And it, and like kids will change everything, everything for you. And for most of us, like you don't even blink or think twice or like, um, you don't even realize it, man. It just, no, it just, it kinda just happens. happens because human nature takes over, right? And right. you're just sort of responsible for this thing. But anyway, I, so I said to say, like, 
it's it's awesome what he's done from a football perspective and from an economics perspective and whatever for Colorado. But I think to not see him sort of lose that perspective of, you know, just a human and, and do that. And then just the message that he delivered with partnering with this bank for these for these kids. That's amazing. Um, it, was, it was awesome, man. And then I saw the clip of him watching. They won their game this this week against I think it was North Dakota State. It was. Correct me wrong. And um, they lost a close one, which it shouldn't have been close. Right? No, no, no. Like they it, won a close one. I mean, sorry. They won a close one, yeah. which shouldn't have been close i think it is but north dakota state is a really good champion d2 school but they're yeah. fcs right. right and so they're not a division one but they are the champs like they've, they're a dynasty yes. in, in the fcs but again they shouldn't be I, or sorry colorado i think the goal of colorado is to not sweat against the, you should be blowing these teams out by 100 right like the, i think colorado wants to be blowing out even you know division one schools by 60 right like that's right. where they want to be um anyway I saw a clip of him showing film tape to his uh, players afterwards, yep. and he was very complimentary. Like he was pausing plays oh, North that Dakota North State. Dakota had. Done oh well. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was calling them out, and he was saying, "This is why these guys are champions." And one of the things that stood out, man, and it's something we talked about a couple weeks ago, which is like our legacy and like what you leave behind and what that. And he goes, uh, and he said something like, "Look at," it. I think it was the way the the players attack the ball or something like that. And he was just like, "Look at how these guys attack the ball." And he goes like, "And this is a new set of players, but these guys have won multiple championships over the last, you know, however long." Right. Doing this, just doing this style, doing this thing. He goes like, they've been passing that down. That's and their legacy. Looked, and that's their thing. And he looked at his players and he goes, what are you guys passing down? What do you know? And he's like pointing some out. What are you passing down? What are you passing down? What are you passing down? And, um, and I just thought, obviously, college football is more business than, than I think we want to admit. And it's more, we don't give a shit about student athletes and, 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 you know, everything else that we claim that we care about. At the end of the day, it's a sport and it's a business and, yep. it's, and that's what we care about. Um, but I thought it was neat uh, to see someone like Deion Sanders, who obviously cares about those things. I'm not saying that he doesn't. He does. But I, I think first and foremost, as a coach, uh, especially for a lot of these kids who may not have a male role model or may not have a dad or just, you know, you, whatever their home life may be, um, just, you know, socioeconomically, it's the, the numbers are the numbers. Yep. I think giving them uh, guidance and something to look to and and then not just going like, hey, you can score touchdowns, but going like, I want you to be a good, good, good human. I don't give a fuck what you do after this or go right. to the NFL. I want you to take care of your baby. I don't want you to look at that as a burden. I want you to, you know, like, like look at the work ethic. I want you to think about what you're passing down. I want, you know, like, I, I think that's something that gets lost a lot um, now, especially when it comes to college sports. And I think to see someone like him put it sort of at the forefront, someone who's flashy, someone who has the swagger, someone oh, yeah. who kids look to. That's to neon, we neon, are, yeah, man. He's the human highlight reel, yeah, right? Like, yeah. we love watching him. I think coming from someone like that, I think I think kids will respect it. And he's obviously in charge of a lot of kids who will become young men who will sort of like live their life by a lot of the guidance that he's yeah. set for them. And so, so, so shout out to, to, to him, man. Just seeing that story, I thought it was cool as fuck. Um, that he cares that much because you don't have to do that man like i just i just go back to like you don't you can just recruit the best players in the country and swap them out every year and just promise these guys like a fucking corvette while they go to school there right. and whatever like yeah but this was like hey this is just another sort of like benefit that we offer but this benefit is so it, it's if you're telling it to a kid it's not a it's not a high selling point because like most kids are selfish right most 18 19 20 year olds are selfish right like they're just worried about themselves and right. their goals and so this isn't a yes it's a recruiting tool but the type of young man you're going to attract by offering this is a little bit different than the type of young man you're going to attract by offering them a home. yeah and so yeah and brother the whole the whole like 529 thing right like using that for your kids um i've done something a little bit different i've done the prepaid college here in, here in florida but it was all based on you know something, something that i started way back when my kids were like a year old and now they're about to enter college so it's, it's crazy man how time how time flies and 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 how you a small investment um you know now would you know reaps dividends um in in the future Dude, yeah, absolutely Dude, i think we I, I i think i've mentioned this to you on this podcast before the reason i looked into prepaid or any college money at all was because of you because you fucking almost 20 years ago or 15 years ago when, yeah. when we first met through a conversation you were telling me and i was like what and then 
you know, I was like a fucking 20 year old kid who didn't know anything. And I don't even think I had a kid yet. And you, you had happened to mention that and it was something that stuck with me. And I just remember going like, I have to do that when I have kids. Yep. And then I had a kid and I was like, I really need to do that. When I have, you know, it's like one of those things that always stuck with me. But it's like one of those where like at the time you probably didn't think like, I'm going to mention this and Juan's going to use it in his life one day. No, definitely not. No, right? Like, you're just telling me a thing and it's just something that stuck with me, man. And you just don't know what sticks with people, yeah. man. And and to talk about, like, legacy, right? Like, I hope that, you know, I, I've told my kids of just like, oh, you know what? Like, my mom gave me $2,000 and said, here, like, go to college. Yeah. Right? And 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 my wife has a, has a different story, right? And it's just like, so we've done this instead where we do the prepaid and and i hope that that's what i'm passing down to my kids so that when they have their own that, that they are looking out for their kids in the same manner hopefully they're able to do more than i can or than i was able to um but you know you hope that that's those are the things that you pass yeah you down. hope you set the, sort of the bottom line right and then yeah and then they either get improved from there or at least maintain that. at least maintain it yeah yeah no for sure you're setting an example and that example becomes um, a legacy in itself because it becomes the norm eventually, right? Like you right. do it, your kids might be like, well, you know, my dad did this and they might do it for the next one and then they might be like, you know, and, and at some point it gets broken, but there is a, a, a carry on effect to that where you go, man, if that lasts seven generations from now, it had to be you that started it, right? Because right. you had to sort of be the catalyst that kept that thing going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, man. Yo, I got something I want to leave leave the people with. Let's do it, man. For 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 the for the big dub. Yo, um, shit. I gotta pull it up. You know what? First, tell them where they can find us. Do it at the Carbon Food Podcast on IG on a uh, TikTok at Carbon FP or at Carbon Food Podcast at Carbon FP Pod on X. Uh, the Carbon Food Podcast on YouTube on Audible on Spotify on Stitcher on. Uh, all Radio of FM, all of it. Uh, leave us reviews, man. Audible, you can leave us a review. Please leave us a review on there. You know, it's an Amazon platform. Obviously, it's big. Um, Apple Podcasts, leave us a review on there if you can, if you haven't. Um, even if it sucks, like, I, I don't care. Like, you know, we, we, we take all the feedback. Um, but just leave us a review. It helps with the algorithm. It helps us know what we're doing right and wrong. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, I think we, you know, 200 episodes in, we we didn't think anybody was listening and then now it's like we want the most people to listen and then i think that gives us some um, i don't want to say a purpose but I, I i think it 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 would be it would be disingenuous to say that we don't care it's fuel that people listen or not yeah Dude, absolutely. You, you got you guys yeah. are our fuel man yeah. when 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 we get when we get anything whether it's whether it's a a, a review or or a comment over a text or something on an IG post like it's you'd be surprised man that shit it, we we really we, you know we read all of those and they're just fuel yeah. for the next times so even the bad ones we because love it. again even the bad ones are a form of attention and they're a form of a conversation starter and at the end of the day like I I'm not and I know you're not. We're not looking for people to agree with what we're saying, or we're no, not no, no, absolutely think, not. Like we're just trying no, we, to, we, we could be you know, trying to make you laugh, trying to entertain you, yeah. trying to make you think, trying to make you have you know gig, open us to shit we never heard before, and then put us on to your favorite drink, and then hopefully we've done the same. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. All right, man. I, would, I had this post that I, that Charlemagne the God put out there, and for those of you who know Charlemagne the God, um, uh, you know, host of the uh, the Breakfast Club in the morning, or co-host Breakfast Club in the morning, also does the Brilliant Idiots with uh, with Andrew Schultz. Um, he's he's huge into like mental mental health, and, okay. he, and he put this post out recently where he says uh, we don't realize that the first sign of our mental health is suffering isn't a panic attack or an emotional breakdown. It starts with waking up exhausted, even after sufficient sleep, difficulty getting out of bed, frequent headaches, lack of motivation, gut issues, skin issues, muscle aches, the need to distance yourself, irritability. Disturbed sleep, low energy, feeling lost or stuck, memory struggles, self-sabotage behaviors, brain fog, fatigue. Your body speaks to you. Listen to it before it has to scream. I feel attacked because that <laughs> shit is so true. And we appreciate you guys. And we'll see you next week. See you next week. Peace. Peace.